Hi everyone, I want to show you a position from the 39th Soviet Chess Championships in Leningrad from 1971 with the white pieces was Grandmaster uh, Leonard Stein and with the black pieces uh, Mikhail Tal. In this position is white to move and uh, so Stein played this move E4. Now, one word about these positions uh, with with the black pieces in particular. Uh, they're very solid, but they also, if not handled correctly, can lead to an extremely passive position where you uh, just get ground down. Um, it's hard to move these pawns, and I'm speaking of the black side, it's hard to move these pawns without creating... Uh, weaknesses in the position, for instance, isolated pawns, hanging pawn structures, and things of that nature. Usually, uh, a player will try to maintain that structure as is, but the problem with that strategy is the uh, passivity that results. So, uh, just looking at this position, uh, this position is, um, you know, I would give white a slight nod here. Um, black has a, a lead in development, a slight lead in development, but the positions is still relatively closed. So that is really not going to, um, you know, really be that big of a factor at this point. And it's only a slight lead in development, but nevertheless, black has a slight lead in development. However, white's pieces that are developed, uh, I think, are more ideally... Uh, placed again these are slight advantages just slight things to uh, notice in the position you know white having a little bit more space for example <clears throat> in, the, in the center than uh, black um, black's bishop uh, being an important piece this dark this bishop on e7 for example uh, when I see a lot of pawns on light squares like this Okay, that means the dark squares are vulnerable. So that tells me if I could get rid of this guy, that's a good move strategically. But however, you must realize that on the same side, on the white side, the same rules apply. So the dark square bishops are at a premium. This bishop right here is not too um, too effective right now. And neither this is this one. But the uh, white bishop on G2 has a little bit more scope. All right, so basically what Black is dealing with right now is uh, he has to fight against um, white space advantage in the center, which is um, the the biggest thing that stands out uh, in the position right now. And this explains uh, Tao's next move. At the Stein played E4, Tao struck back in the center with uh, C5. Another option here is D takes E4. However, um, surrendering the center has to be uh, done with care. Sometimes, um, you know, it has its benefits because you can exchange some pieces or what have you. Uh, but here, um, white uh, has a good position. Again, uh, black is uh, struggling here not not too badly but it's just one of those positions where he has little prospects it's hard for black to play c5 at this moment because the rook is well placed on d um d1 the bishop is soon going to come to uh b2 black uh white has great control of the e5 square so it's hard for for black to generate counterplay although when you look at the position right now he's not really losing but the prospects a pretty dim. Another idea after queen takes e4 instead of knight f6, just bishop d6 is possible. So queen takes e4, bishop d6. And keeping an eye on e4, of course, white just simply plays bishop f4. Again, with a, a good position uh, for white. So Tao doesn't want to go into something like that, and he plays c5. Of course, it's double-edged, and um, it fits Tao style. Stein plays a logical move. He takes d4. Excuse me, he takes d5. He takes d5. And basically, he's just trying to inflict damage on Tao's pawn structure here. d takes c5, 
but Tao is right in step with them and plays this move D takes C4 alright and of course after Bishop takes C4 and let's say Rook takes C5 or even Bishop takes C5 is possible uh, Black actually comes out with a better uh, pawn structure here and he has a nice target to attack on the C file and this is definitely enough to give uh, Black the necessary, necessary uh, play in the position however Stein had a surprise up his sleeve before I get into that though, I want to go back to um, where Stein had played e takes d5 and show you this other option e5 and this is another option to gain space however with the pawns on c5 and d5 like that um, the position can become very unstable for white his center so knight e4 knight takes e4 d takes e4 91 for example and again black has a lot of uh, counterplay here f5 how are you going to break that down uh, e takes f6 on passant knight takes f6 however let's go a little bit more the bishop e3 for example again white ends up with the kind of structure whereby he can work on for 50 60 moves you know working on these uh, e pawns Black had no choice but to play dynamically in a position like this. And this is just a, a sample line, but uh, Black definitely um, has to be careful not to uh, just lose, especially being a pawn down. The plus in the position is Black is fully developed and has, um, you know, his bishops are well placed, his rooks are well placed, his king is safe. So he has attacking chances, and this is how he has to uh, play end this game possibly even sacrificing the e-pawn for example the move like e3 just to open this diagonal because there's no there's no question about it that black must play uh, dynamically another another example is this move right here attacking this guy right away all right and after showing you that line you could kind of see that Tao might favor a line like that Right, sacrificing, uh, sacrificing a pawn to get all this activity. All right, so Stein took this road because you got to remember, by 1971, the world knew, you know, Tao style. It wasn't like it was 1957, and you know, people didn't know how Tao played. At this point, people knew, you know, uh, Tao's reputation. As they say, his reputation preceded him. So. Back to the game after uh, e takes d5, e takes d5, d takes c5 by Stein, and now d takes c4 by Tao. If uh, Bishop takes c5, then Stein has a good move right here at knight h4. And what this does is exploits the pin right here on this um, this bishop. Notice this pawn can't move, and it's kind of related to some of those Queen's Indian lines where the pawn is sacrificed on d5, and this knight goes here and here. It's kind of the, a similar uh, idea. Of course, he could have just played knight d4 too with the same idea as the bishop on b7 is not adequately protected. So it's kind of like white has a, a move that, you know, extra move. Uh, you know to exploit that situation however Tao played a good move he just played D takes C4 and again I think he's just anticipating B takes C4 and Rook takes C5 alright but instead Stein played the beautiful move here after D takes C4 D takes C4 he sacrifices the pawn he doesn't try to catch cap, uh, recapture the pawn on C4 but he just plays B4 B takes C5 from Tau. And B5. And that is the stellar move of the game. I wish I could have saw Tau's face when that move appeared on the board. And now what you have pretty much is a 2 to 1 uh, pawn majority on the queen side for white. You had the pawns on the A and B file versus the pawn on the A file. And white's argument is to prove that those 
C pawns are weak. Queen B6. Bishop F8. Excuse me, Bishop F4. And this is an interesting position right here. Because the queen is precariously placed on D8. All right. And you see the rook on D1 is there in opposition. So Tau wants to get the uh, queen out of the way here. So he plays queen B6. Now bishop F4. Now notice the queen The queen doesn't really have a lot of squares to go to. So Tau has to make sure his queen doesn't get trapped. Rook FD8. And now A4. And now I, the threat is real simple. It's just to play A5. Trapping the queen. So now, this explains Tao's next move, which was queen a5. If he tried to play, um, let's just make a random a random move here. King h8, for instance. a5, and then queen e6. It looks like he can escape, but after knight g5, queen is trapped. Okay, there's nowhere, there's no, um, I'm sorry, the queen, the queen is, is hit right here. The queen goes to here and then you just win this piece bishop takes uh b7 so the threats the threats to trap the queen are what leads to loss of material this is why tau had to play uh queen h or uh, why he played queen a5 here another move he could have tried to um you know get the queen out of danger was knight h5 and say after knight g5 threatening Check on h7, bishop takes g5, bishop takes g5, knight df6, and now a5, then the queen can jump back to <laughs> c7. Although, after rook takes d8, rook takes d8, the pawns start marching. b6, a takes, a takes b6, and the queen, of course, can't capture because of rook b1. And let's make... Uh, And go back again. Another line after knight h5 instead of knight g5. Bishop takes here. Bishop takes is um, black could try this in between move. Bishop takes here, but that fails simply to. Bishop d8 with the attack on the queen. So no rest for the weary. So after a4, Tau plays queen a5. Knight d2. So now, not only is white threatening to get the material back, but here's the harassment of the queen again. So now bishop takes g2. In between move, or uh, Zwijin Zug. Knight takes c4. Queen b4. Knight a2. There's constant harassment of the queen. Now, the only way out is to play bishop e4. Knight takes. Bishop takes c2. Knight takes c2. Alright. Knight b6. Stein starts simplifying, knowing, knowing that he has a superior uh, ending here now. Knight 2, e3. Knight takes c4. Knight takes c4. Knight d5. And now Stein makes a slight, slight uh, error here. Plays rook d1. Um, better was rook e1 just threatening a mate uh, right away. Bishop f6. Bishop e5. And let's say, for example, rook e8, and then the pawns can start rolling now. Instead, he played rook d1. Knight b6. And this was a mistake by Tao. Tao actually, his best shot, he, although white would still be better here, is probably knight takes f4. But he went for a more dynamic approach. And his uh, Tao's approach during the game is based on sacrificing a piece for the two pawns. But this might have give gave more chances. Again, this is just a sample line. And we can see 
culmination of white strategy with that pass pawn. So here, Tau played knight b6. And knight d6 came in strong by Stein. Rook a8, protecting the a pawn. Now the pawns start rolling. Knight a4. Knight c4, protecting the asset on a5. Now knight c3 with the double attack here. And now Stein plays a good move, just threatening mate. So this pawn is preserved. And this is where Stein decides to give up uh, material for the two pawns. I'm sorry, Tau decides to give up the material for the two pawns. So bishop takes a5, knight takes a5, and then knight takes b5. However, after the simple rook e5, Stein immediately gets one of the pawns back. And uh, there goes any thought of uh, compensation that Tao might have had. And on move 33, uh, Mikhail Tao resigned the game. Uh, absolutely fantastic game uh, and concept uh, that Stein used here. I was, I'm not sure if he was, uh, you know, I haven't checked the base database extensively to see he, if he was the first to, uh, you know, if this was a novel novelty at the time. You know, this concept right here on move 14, where he um, played b4, b takes c5, and b5. So I'm not I'm not going to say, you know, he he was the first. I'm not sure. But um, in this game, it definitely seemed to um, catch catch Tao unawares. And, um, you know, he play, played it brilliantly. So I hope you enjoyed that game. And uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.